All right, so now, as promised, we're going to do some more math. In this case, we're going to look at now how we find the distance between two lines that are parallel. So um, here we have the lines y1 is 1 half x minus 2, and y2 is 1 half x plus 1. So um, for this, um, I recommend drawing a sketch, um, but not kind of a little more, little more um, detail than the other problems we were working on, um, where you want to draw the x and y axes. So let me um, let me just tell you how I would recommend drawing x y axes. Again, you don't have to like be like super detailed with all the all the numbers and all that. Um, just draw it so you can get a sense of like where these lines are relative to each other. Also, you want to know where the intercepts are. So um, I don't have a ruler, but I have this piece of wood that I got from Australia. It's actually a boomerang holder. Um, so it's going to have to do. So let's craft this. These are going to be kind of flat. So y2, let's say it's something like over here. And y1 will be below that. So I'm going to call this will be y1. And this will be y2. Now, um, are they parallel? Can't really tell. Okay. Um, so these are parallel. And what I mean is when you're um, drawing your sketch, um, label the intercepts. So label where they go through the x and y axes. So y2 has a y intercept of. One, so we're gonna have zero one over here. And then um, this point over here will be when y is zero. And again, and again, these aren't necessary, but I'll show you why these could be useful, and especially when I'm explaining this whole concept. So again, we solve we can solve for y, but I'm just gonna do it in my head. Um plug in plug in zero for y and then we'll just get that x is x will be negative two so then this will be negative two comma zero and then over here y1 will have a y intercept of negative two so this will be zero negative two and then um the x intercept for this will be Four zero. Okay, so um, the idea here is to figure out how far these lines are from each other, but there's more than um, there's more than one line segment that you can that you can that you can study. In in fact, you can figure out like an infinite amount. As long as they're perpendicular to both lines, I can find the length of this segment or the length of this segment or the length of this segment or this segment. It doesn't even have to go through any of the intercepts. I could have another, you know, perpendicular segment. Let's say AB. As long as these segments are perpendicular to both y1 and y2, that's all that matters because all these are going to be congruent. So the, the nice thing about these problems is that you have the freedom of picking, um, uh, you know, having the freedom of picking like what points you want to find the distances from, um, you know, all of you are going to be a little different and maybe want, you know, one point over another because maybe it's easier for you. 
or something, but it doesn't matter. All these are going to be the same. Now, what I advise is to use one, especially since, you know, this will save time, to use one of the segments that goes through the y-axis because then you already know where that point is at and you already know the y-intercept. So let's find, um, let's pick, let's pick this guy right here. Let's call this point Z and let's have this point over here. I'm going to call this point A. It's kind of hard to see. Well, let me just actually draw like an arrow so we can. That'll be point A. So point A and point Z. So the goal then is to find the length of AZ. That's our ultimate goal. That's our life's goal for the next 10 or so minutes to find the length of AZ. Now, similar to how we found the, the distance from a point to a line in the previous problems, we're going to just draw, let me use my boomerang thing. We're going to draw or extend this line segment so that it's basically just another line. We're going to call it Y3. So Y3 goes through AZ. And Y3 is perpendicular to Y2 and Y1. So we want to solve for the equation of Y3. Once you solve for the equation of Y3, then you can find where point A is at, and then you can find the distance of AZ. So to find y3, and this is what I mean and how it's going to be pretty easy once you get the logic down. y3, see it goes through the point 0, negative 2. And since it's going to be perpendicular to y1 and y2, the slope is going to be negative 2 over 1. Because the slopes here, the slope here is 1 half. The opposite reciprocal of one half is negative two over one. If you flip it, change the sign. So then y3 will have a slope of negative two. So the equation will be negative two x minus two because the y-intercept here is minus two. So that's the equation of y3. Now, we need to find where point A is at. And to find where point A is at, we set Y3 equal to Y2 because this point is where Y3 or where Y2 and Y3 intersect. This is the point of intersection. And so we just go ahead and set Y3 equal to Y2. We go and then have negative 2x minus 2 equal to 1 half x plus 1. Make sure you know your fractions. Let's, let's um, add 2 to this. Add, let's add 2x to this side and take away 1. So we're going to have negative 3 equal to 1 half x plus 2x. So we get negative three is equal to two and a half x. Two x is just like four halves x. So one half x plus two x is five halves x. To get rid of this five halves, remember we're gonna multiply both sides by two over five because negative three is the same as negative three over one. So multiplying both sides by two over five. That cancel that. And then we get negative 6 over 5 is equal to x. And as long as it's a decimal, it doesn't like 
repeat. It's not an irrational decimal. We can use a decimal and change the x into negative 1.2. Okay, so now x is negative 1.2. So then now we find y. I just plug in negative 1.2 into either y3 or y2, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna plug it into y3 because it's right there. We're plugging this guy into here. Recycling across, we're gonna get y3 equal to negative two times negative 1.2 minus two, like y3. Yeah, y3 is equal to, what is that gonna be 2.4 minus two? So then y3 will be equal to 0 0.4. Okay, then point A will be at the point, at the coordinates negative 1.2 comma 0.4. Um, and I guess we should not call this A. Let's call this a different, let's just call this one, whatever, W. This is A. So then point A is at negative 1.2 comma 0 0.4. And let's write the coordinates over here, so. And then now the last step is just now to find the distance from A to Z using our distance formula. But it, but when you're working on these, make sure you like take a moment to just check to make sure your answer and your coordinates and everything is making sense because um, I've you know it's, it's so it always makes me cry when I'm on a test when I see a student put like a put like. Uh, a coordinate that doesn't make any sense. They'll put that this is like positive 10. It's at positive 10, negative 10 or something. When it, you know, it's obviously not going to be that because it's, you know, over here, positive 10 will be over here. Anyways, make sure this makes sense. And that does because see X is negative, Y is positive, it's below the one. So it's all making sense. So we're good. And then we can go ahead and now find AZ. And um, let me just put it up here. Taking that square root, marker's gonna die. So using the, di using the distance formula, we'll go x2 minus x1, or we'll go actually, yeah, x2, or doesn't matter which one, we'll just go here, this minus that for the x, so negative 1.2, minus zero squared plus 0 0.4 minus negative two squared. Let's carry this down here so it doesn't get in the way of all that. Right, so AZ will then be, this will be just negative 1.2 squared. Minus, minus, a plus, so this will be 2.4 squared. And so then we get, that'll be like 1.44 and that'll be like 2.76. Let me use my calculator because I'm, um, the calculator's getting bored. I want to give them, I want to give him or her or it, whatever it is, something to, something to do. So like 1.2 squared is yeah, 1.44, 2.4 squared, 5.76 plus 1.44. So this is going to add up to 7.2. Obviously. So the square root of 7.2 
That'll be about 2.68. And there we go. And my students always ask, like, how where do they, how far do they round? Blah blah blah. Um, the thing is, don't round until the very end. See, I didn't round at all. Like I kept things as fractions and the decimals were terminating. Um, so even though my calculator is showing like a 2.68328 you know, you know, I could write this, you know, the more the better. I, I would just tell my students if they get all scared and worried because they tend to have panic attacks. I just tell you, okay, just write, write the whole thing. Just do this. Don't round. Just write the whole thing. Because the calculator is eventually going to run out of space. So then just do this. The real answer is um, use common sense. The other real answer is that on a test, I'll tell them. It'll say what to round it to. Um, yeah. So, okay. So there you go. I hope that helps. Um, Practice these. These are the toughest problems in this unit. I'm going to go through another one, um, but first always try these um, on your own and then check with me. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video.